carcinoma with radiation therapy. And this is his routine. He started with the first case. Um, this is a 55-year-old male that was previously treated for oropharyngeal carcinoma with radiation therapy. And this is his routine follow-up diagnostic scan. So what is the best diagnosis? Is it one, ranula, two, epidermoid, three, dermoid, four, silocele, or five, sublingual space? So now we're going to start the clock. And you guys can use your audience response system. You have 10 seconds. Is it? All right, so you have 10 seconds. Is it one, ranula, two, epidermoid, three, dermoid, four, silocele, five, sublingual space abscess? Hmm. Okay, so interesting. The answer is silocele. You guys did pretty good. Um, so what exactly is a silocele? It's just, it's, it's simply a distended excretory duct of the salivary system. It's just a blocked duct. And so what is the etiology of a silocele? Is it calculus, stricture, tumor, or all of the above? So we're going to start the clock again. You have 10 seconds when the clock comes up. There you go. Let's vote. Is it one, calculus, two, stricture, three, tumor, four, all of the above? Very good. So we're going to start off easy and then keep working into it. You guys are doing really great. This, uh, this case is um, an obstructed duct, a silocele due to calculus, which is the most common cause of an obstructed duct in the submandibular, gland, uh, submandibular duct. And you can see on this case, you can see that there is a calculus. Notice this is a contrast-enhanced CT. You don't need to do pre-contrast imaging to see the stone. You can see the stone easily um, adjacent to um, enhancing structures. And you can see the nice tubular uniform dilatation of the submandibular gland duct. So it's also important to know that this is best seen on CT and not MRI. You can miss a stone on MRI. So if you see a dilated duct, you think it's a stone, get a CT. If you don't find a stone on CT, be very, very careful. Make sure you don't miss the other etiology, which is very important. This is a case of a tumor in the floor of mouth. This is cancer. And you can see obvious distension of the left submandibular gland duct, which is Wharton's duct. You can see it dilated all the way back into the substance of the submandibular gland. So other things on the differential that we had to choose from, one was ranula. So what is a ranula? It's, it's a retention cyst of the sublingual gland or the minor salivary gland rests in the sublingual space. So it's just, it's just a cyst. So what would you expect to see? It's well defined, it doesn't enhance, and it's lined by epithelium. This is a nice example of a ranula. You can see the cystic structure in the right sublingual space. And it doesn't have that nice, taut, tubular appearance that a duct would have. So that should help you know it's not an obstructed duct or silocele. Also, it's too anterior in its um, location. The um, orifice of the submandibular gland duct should stop about right here and then empty into the oral cavity, whereas this goes far more anteriorly, and therefore it can't be an obstructed duct. Now, ranula sometimes can be... Um, confused with another entity, a congenital ent entity called the epidermoid. And so what is an epidermoid? It's a congenital inclusion cyst. It's lined by simple, simple squamous epithelium. And it, too, is cystic. It shouldn't enhance. It's unilocular, and it's well demarcated. So here is a nice example of an epidermoid. And like I said, sometimes you just, you just can't tell the difference between the two. It, too, should not enhance. There's another entity that is a congenital entity that can also be a confuser, the dermoid. Well, the dermoid is um, its just like the epidermoid, except for it is lined by um, keratinizing squamous epithelium, and it also has skin appendages in it. So what does that mean relative to the epidermoid? The epidermoid should be homogeneous. The dermoid, because it has skin appendages, it can have various structures in it that make it heterogeneous. Sometimes it doesn't pan out. Sometimes you still can't tell the difference between a dermoid and an epidermoid. As in this case, this is a patient with a midline cystic structure that's not enhancing. Obviously, this is not a tubular obstructed duct just by its appearance and also because it's not in the sublingual space, it's in the midline. Um, this looks homogeneous, so epidermoid, dermoid would be the differential, but know that dermoids are more common. 
Um, but here's an example when you get lucky and you see a scan and you know exactly what it is without further workup. You can see in this um, dermoid, you can see fat contents within it, these little globules within it.